Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both joined by Drew Galloway. And today we are here to talk a little bit about the talent that is on K-State's roster right now and what is kind of in front of them. Because I got to thinking about this recently with the way that K-State was kind of currently constructed and how teams in the past had performed. But it feels to me like the best chance for, for K-State's best season under Chris Kleiman might actually be in front of them for this coming season. I know that uh, at times people will talk a little bit more about 2025 because that'll be after a full year under Avery Johnson's belt. But the fact of the matter is for K-State, there are some guys that are pretty pivotal to the talent of this team that aren't going to be here next year. DJ Giddens has a very real shot to not be here next year. And as good as Dylan Edwards is, I tend to think that a team that has both DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards is better than a team that only has one of those guys. I think we'll find that out this season. I think Avery Johnson can handle it. I think that there are guys on the other side of the ball defensively that you would like to have on what is thought of a, as a talented team. And so I ask you, Drew, uh, before we dive into talking about what is in front of him this year, how would you rank the now six seasons, because this will be season number six for Chris Kleiman at K-State, how would you rank those in order of worst to best in terms of however you want to define his best team, whether it includes the achievements that they got to or the talent on the team probably has to be some combination. Cause if you come in and you say, well, the 2021 team had more talent on the roster than 2019. I'm going to say, eh, I would probably argue that the 2019 team was better than the 2021 team though. So I, I will give the floor to you to kind of uh, set the stage for your thoughts here. Uh, I love this question. It was actually something that I had kind of thought about pretty hard when you discussed it Monday and was going back and forth with some of uh, my personal rankings. I, I, I think that there's a definitive last. Like, the, the COVID season has to be the worst. Like, I, I think that that's kind of the undisputed one out of all of this. K-State kind of fell apart towards the end of the season. Yeah, that one's last by a mile and a half. Yeah, like, it, it's like bottom, bottom. Uh, next for me, I, I kind of tend to agree with you. I, I would say 2021, probably worse than 2019, because twenty if you look at the, the 2021 season and 2019 season, they were very similar, except you didn't have the highs in 21 as you did in 19, as you're showing right now with the, the two top 25 wins. Uh, so I, I would say probably 21, then 19, and then I would say last season, uh, 2023. And, and then this is where it's really tough, because I, I do you want to take the gamble and say this season? Or do you want the safe answer, which is 2022 when K-State won the Big 12, had three top 10 wins and had a first round NFL draft pick on the team. Uh, but I, I would I'm going to be a little bit safer because, you know, what happened in 2022. And I'll say that I'll go with this year's team and then uh, the 2022 season. But th that could easily be flipped when we're talking, and even as early as November, that that could be flipped. I, I think you have it exactly right. I, I I'm in agreement with you. Uh, 2020 is clearly the worst, and that that's such an interesting one too, because you think about some of the guys that were on the team, and you say, well, you know, maybe they weren't actually like that bad. And if it's a normal year, normal circumstances. Uh, also, Skylar Thompson doesn't get hurt game three because Rico Jeffers is a is a loser uh then maybe it's a little bit of a different story but that season just had zero fun to it uh I mean when you start with a loss to Arkansas State when everybody is healthy in terms of football health not necessarily uh you know illness health uh that's pretty it's pretty good indicator of what might be coming your way and it, it the Oklahoma hurt. win was fun, but everything that came after it was not. Well, the KU game was pretty fun that year. Phillip Brooks it, it, with his two punt returns. Jalen Daniels also threw the worst pass I've ever seen a Division One quarterback make in that game. But I, I think that, that that 2020 season started and ended just so not fun. 
Yeah, the, and there was and there were there were bad ones in the middle there too, where you think about what they couldn't do anything in the game at West Virginia. The Oklahoma State game at home was a disaster. The butt kicking at Iowa State when K State I think had four healthy players uh, on the team and went to Ames, and then yeah, the Texas game. But honestly, I think the worst game of 2020 was that loss at Baylor, where K State basically should have had that game in their hands. That Baylor team only won two games in 2020. The only two teams they beat were in the state of Kansas that year. It was KU and K-State. Uh, that, to me, might be the worst loss of 2020 for K-State. So, yeah, 2020 is down there, and sorry for re reminiscing so long about it. 2021, same type of deal. Real, the season of 2021 really wasn't fun until they got to beat the crap out of LSU the last game of the year. And they had to wait until the last bowl game other than the national championship to do it. But, like, there wasn't a ton of excitement. Uh, I mean, the Stanford game was fun to start the year like that. But then Skyler was hurt basically immediately. You had to go with the Will Howard show. And then Will was hurt in the game at Oklahoma State. So you just were subjected to Jaron Lewis. 2021 was not fun. It was a bit of a disaster. Um, and even though they ended up with the same record as 2019, you kind of alluded to it. The vibes were not as good there as they were for the season prior to that. And then 2019 is right out there after that, that, though. I think there is a little bit more of a gap, though. There's a chunk between 2021 and 2019. And then you go from there. Uh, last year is, is probably number three on that list. And there's an avenue where it maybe should have been higher and better, but it wasn't because of some shortcomings in a couple of games for K-State. And then... I totally agree. I think you have to take the achievement that came with 2022 right now and say that is number one before 24 plays a snap. But I really do think there is a possibility that, like you said, very early on, um, we're talking about that the, this team this year being Chris Kleiman's best at K-State. Yeah, and I think it's because of kind of what we've talked about all offseason long so far, which is that this K-State team is pretty young and – pretty inexperienced uh but that kind of makes the season a little bit more fun because you have some young guys that have high ceilings that are inexperienced and, and if they can really hit those highs you would expect that 20 the 24 team to potentially pass that 2022 team uh the the interesting thing that i i've just kind of thought about now I'll, I'll ask you this is does the 24 team or is the 24 team able to pass the 2022 team without winning the Big 12? I think that I think that depends on what you think the college football playoff selection committee ends up thinking of the Big 12 and will do for them. And it also probably just comes down to to how the season looks because there's a there's a realistic scenario where K-State goes 11 and 1 and they're not playing in the Big 12 championship game because there are so many teams, and we've talked about, the schedule's fairly favorable to a couple of the teams that are in the top five or six of the conference, like Utah, K-State, KU, Oklahoma State, Arizona, even to some extent. Like You could make the case that all those teams navigate conference play with only one loss, and then it's you know tiebreaker hell that you're trying to break down. And we know that the, that the Big 12 cannot handle figuring out their tiebreakers uh, in, a, in a good manner. Um, so there, there would be the chance of that. I, I think it really all just comes down to this team probably would have to go 11 and one for that to happen. Um, or t I don't know, 10 and two, depending on how it looks, but probably 11 and one. Cause that's, you look at what's on K state schedule this year and you say, where would two losses come that you're satisfied and say, Hey, you know what? Y you gave it your all. Like you can look at 2022 and the Tulane loss really sucked at the time, but you can look at 2022 and say, what regular season loss do you really want to be mad at them for losing for? You know, you, you lost to Tulane and Texas at home. That can be maddening, but at the end of the day, those were two really good football teams with a lot of talent. Tulane went on to win the Cotton Bowl, um, and, and Texas, we know what happened a year later. And then the TCU loss, K-State would have won that game if Jake Rubley doesn't have to play. I'm confident in saying that. So that's, I guess, the interesting thing. And, and this year, though, if K-State loses more than 
once or twice, you're feeling pretty gross about some of the losses because you'd have to lose to like West Virginia or Colorado or, you know, Iowa State, and you just can't have that. And I think this team has to really bounce back and and get Iowa State this year to make up for what happened last season. Um, but I, I really do think this is probably, if you're talking about what is on this team, you're not going to have the amount of players drafted this coming year that we're on that 2022 team, but you do have guys that probably have the potential down the road to make it to that spot. And in terms of what they can do with their talent collegiately, I think the ceiling might be higher for a lot of these guys on this team compared to 2022. And in addition to that, because I think some people would be surprised. I mean, Deuce Vaughn was one of the best players to ever play football at K-State. But statistically speaking, DJ Giddens is not, you know, miles apart from what Deuce Vaughn was able to produce for K-State. So you have that. There's a chance that Avery Johnson is on that Mount Rushmore of K-State quarterbacks when all is said and done. Um, and he very well could be number one in a lot of people's eyes. Like the talent is there. The way he's handled it to this point sets up for that. Uh, so I think if you're ranking them right now, this season coming up is probably number two there. But if we're being honest, like I think by the end of this season, you would want and you should be able to say that this 2024 team is going to be Chris Kleiman's best team at K-State in terms of what they're able to achieve, not necessarily, hey, you don't have Julius Brents and Felix Anyadike Uzama and Deuce Vaughn and Josh Hayes and all these guys that ended up getting taken in the NFL draft. They're not on this roster, but you do have a lot of other guys that can make up a really, really good team, and they're playing a weaker conference schedule uh, than the 2022 team did. Yeah, I, I really loved the 2022 team and kind of how that season went. But I think that if if we're looking, and again, this is so easy to say when the the – the bullets aren't flying and we haven't seen case eight play down yet. But I think that if we're being 100% honest, that even in the expanded playoff K state wins the big 12 in 22, I don't think that that team wins a playoff game. I think that there is, I mean, a, we kind of, we honestly, 2022 is a pretty good indicator because yeah. K state, that's the kind of opponent they probably would have played in their, their first round of a playoff oh, that yeah. year is Alabama. And as we know, like if you get the wrong draw there, there are there are three or four teams in the SEC occasionally that you are going to be worlds apart from. Like that's just a fact. Now, there are other years where like say last season, K-State could get the third or fourth best team in the SEC and it's Missouri, who we know K-State could have just as easily beaten Missouri last year in Columbia and you know, and they ended up not doing it, but they could have done it. I mean, it was a 61-yard field goal by Mevis uh, and, and everything else that went into that game. K-State could have beaten that Missouri team last year, and that's why, it, going back to kind of ranking these things, last season's team is closer to being this season in 2022 than it is to being those eight-win seasons we talked about of 2019 oh, yeah. and 2021. Uh, because they were, there was a fine line there. They were this close to being in the mix for some of those. But it, it, you're just, it's going to be a luck of the draw thing with the way that you get things. And that's why that 2022 K State team, especially the way that they were set up there, because guys were starting to deal with, you know, injuries of their own. Um, I mean, Will Howard had to come in to save Adrian Martinez, but it's not like Will was clean the entire year with his health, too. Uh, Malik Knowles had gotten hurt and was not 100% after that Big 12 title game. And, like, you can just go down the list. That team started to kind of get banged up at the worst time. They weren't set up for what would have been a, a playoff run in that scenario. And, yeah, you got what could happen with this setup and an Alabama team that was really good. But this team, to me, because – this current year, 2024, this team is set up in a way that they have some of the pieces that could hang a little bit better with a team like that Alabama because Will Howard executed at a really high level at the end of 2022. Like he made some plays where you go, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's doing it. That's kind of his angels in the outfield season. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if there was 
some nine year old in the crowd in Arlington that was like, didn't you see the Angels dad? And the dad's like, I don't see anything. I just see Will Howard zipping touchdowns to RJ Garcia. Like that's normal. Uh, but then we saw like that wasn't the same Will Howard even last year, even though that was Will Howard was good last year and all that. He couldn't come through and he couldn't make the play for you against Alabama. K State only had one player that could make the play against Alabama. It was Deuce Vaughn, and he did it against Alabama to put them up 10 to nothing. But now you have multiple players like that on this K State roster this year. This team, this year's team would be better equipped to play and hang with that Alabama team in 2022 because Avery Johnson can make plays at quarterback like the best quarterback in the country. DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards can make plays like some of the best players in the country because I believe that's the talent level that they have. Um, you just didn't have that on the that K-State team in 2022 because you basically had one and a third, one and a half of those guys with Deuce Vaughn and Ben Sennett kind of, but uh, you've got more options like that this year, and that's why this team might be built to be the one that achieves at the highest level under Chris Klein because it's got just – Little little equation after little equation that will add up for you that you say, okay, you got the talent in the right spots. You got the schedule that's favorable. You got all these little things that suggest that this team could put together and maybe should put together uh, a 10-win regular season, probably better, win a conference title, and be in the mix to really compete in the college football playoff until you know you get to the – semifinal national championship where the big 12 and ACC uh, outside of maybe Clemson and Florida state will never win a national title again. Yeah. And I think that you have the talent and the high end talent, and you also probably have the best depth that a Chris Kleiman team has ever had. So I think that you add both of those two together and it's kind of like, like that perfect storm of the highs of this team coming up could be very, very high. And Avery Johnson is the kind of quarterback that could will you to win a playoff game where, I mean, Adrian Martinez kind of willed K-State to win that Oklahoma game. And Will Howard was really good down the stretch. But I don't think that they're the kind of guys that could have willed K-State to win a playoff game like Avery Johnson could. So it's not out of the question this team could even win a playoff game or if K-State doesn't win the Big 12 could potentially win two. So I, I think that the highest of the highs could be with this 2024 team. Uh, but God, they, they, I, the one thing that I keep going back to is just the the memories of last season where the f fun games, like the close games, K-State always it was just on the wrong side of that up until the Pop-Tarts Bowl. And I think that that's kind of why last season is in that middle tier and you said that it's closer to last season for you, but for me, it's it's closer to that bottom tier because they couldn't get the job done in the close games. Yeah, that's fair. I I just think yes, they couldn't get it done, but they were right there, and you know they're the the one play away or whatever from flipping it to where it is in that same category and and thought process. I mean, honestly, if you think about the last two seasons for many different reasons, but there is a lot of symmetry between what happened in those two years to what would happen in little two year spans of Snyder 1.0, where, you know, you would now it, probably more like, I guess you would say, Oh, two and Oh three, because K state had two really good teams. Those two seasons, one year you were able to rise above and win the, the, the conference championship and maybe you left more of what could have been out there because you came up just short in games. Like K-State lost by a score to Tulane that year. They lost by a score to Texas that year. They lost by a score at TC, a little more than a score, but again, Jake Rubley, asterisk. Um, <laughs> like similar type of deal when you talk to people and they they give you, and players from that era too of 02 and 03, where you're like, man, they, they dropped some games in there that if they just don't do that, like, we're not just talking about K-State with another conference championship. You're talking about K-State seriously in the mix and talent-wise at, at a certain level. Uh, and so I do think there's a lot of similarity that similarities there between uh, the last two years and, and a lot of the things that uh, Bill Snyder did from basically the mid-90s until the early 2000s where 
you're putting talent into the NFL at a rate higher than what you normally do at K-State. We've seen that the last couple of seasons for Chris Kleiman. Um, and then everything that you're accomplishing on the field and then the things that you're coming up just short of accomplishing on the field. It, it molds pretty well together. And that, honestly, is a good sign for K-State. Like Some of that is painful, but if you take it all together and look forward, you go – and people have have said it a lot, but like K State has set themselves up in a situation where Chris Kleiman was the best possible outcome post Bill Snyder because he's done enough to spin this his way in the way that you need to do it in the modern era of college football. Uh, but you can pretty easily uh, draw the the similarities between Kleiman and Snyder in the way that they're accomplishing things at K State. Yeah, I, I would 100% agree with that. And I mean, if you disagree, I think that you are extremely wrong because you can go back and look at uh, some other coaching hires in that uh, same cycle. So I, I think that Casey did as good as they possibly could have done. And I think that Chris Kleiman is, I don't want to say has reached his peak yet because I, I think that there's still another uh, peak that could be accomplished. Yeah, I don't think we'll I don't think we'll know until he's able to get that second conference championship and then whatever else comes with it. Or if you know you, you go accolade adjacent and it's winning a playoff game or something like that. Um, because that would be the next level. And I I think that's the thing that should make people feel good. But also you think about it like you ask people in, in 2003, they're probably telling you that Bill Snyder doesn't only win one more conference championship. And they they probably don't believe if you say, hey, the next one comes in 2012. Uh, they're probably thinking it comes much sooner than that. Um, or, or, you know, people prior to that would have thought, how did it take until 03 to get it done? Like there were some shortcomings there. Some things can change rather quickly. But you think with Kleiman, I don't think K-State is going 10 years until another conference championship. They've gone 03, 12, 22. I don't think you're going to have to wait that long if you're a K-State fan. Uh, and that would probably signal that, hey, Chris Kleiman is not done ascending with this program. Yeah, I, I think that it won't be that long at all. I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if K-State wins it this year. I mean, we both picked it in our preseason Big 12 polls. Yeah, I mean, they you you think they they'd have they they have to be at least in the mix this year, and we'll see uh, how it ends up going for them. But interesting to talk about and think of how everything ends up looking, and uh, now we'll see moving forward what the uh, outcome ends up being this year, and if we sit at the end of the season discussing it and saying, okay, uh, move this this year's team above the 2022 team. There are a couple different ways it can happen, but. Uh, you got to take the accolades when you've gotten them and keep that in their spot. And you can certainly project though. And I do think this is Chris Kleiman's best chance at doing something special at K state yet. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want more on the cats, head over to on three, find kstateonline.com. Also be sure to stay right here on the YouTube. You can subscribe if you would like to, uh, it'd be appreciated, but you can go and see Drew and I broke down earlier the commitments that K-State received this week, two safeties adding to their 2025 class, and a lot of other good things coming your way. And we will be back again tomorrow where you'll get a look at K-State practice and then our thoughts uh, that we got to see from at least the couple of minutes that we got to see guys run around, mainly stretch, uh, but you know maybe some, some movement. And like we – can- uh, we can break down some flexibility. Who's the most flexible? Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Who was the most chatty during stretches? Uh, that signals confidence. Who actually wants to be there? Uh, we'll just be body language doctors tomorrow because uh, I know everybody loves when that goes on. So we will get out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow after thoughts from K-State football practice as uh, fall fall camp has begun. You know we're here in July, and they're going to call it fall camp. Uh, it's really getting ready for the season in the hottest part of the year. So uh, we're out of here. Talk to you again tomorrow.